but she also was covered in freckles. So in addition to all the tattoos that I had to put on her, I had to cover the bodies in freckles. So it was a very, very challenging movie, but, and it was an awful movie, but I, I liked the work that I did. Eh, bueno, eh, bueno, eh, mine's a lot shorter. Um, I did a movie that may or may not have made it down here called Rocket Boys, which was a story about uh, some young boys that worked their way out of a coal mining town that was very depressed in West Virginia by winning a science fair. And uh, that was the first I ever really made a lot of rockets. I think I made 170 rockets on that movie. And all the rockets on that movie, that was right when visual effects was starting. They wanted to do them in visual effects. And except for the last half of the flight of the last rocket in the movie, every rocket was done with uh, pure old-fashioned special effects. And um, looking back at that, I, I feel pretty good about how many rockets I made go up in the air and flip and blow up when they were supposed to, or go up in the air and turn right when they were supposed to, or whatever else they were supposed to do. I was not union, and you have to be union to get a job in Atlanta, Georgia. The makeup artist from Los Angeles had a list of resumes, and she was going down the list making calls, and she called my number, and she asked for Harriet. I didn't know who Harriet was, but I said, you know, so I answered anyway. And she said, are you available for work tomorrow? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm, I'm available for work tomorrow. So I go to work, and I'm there maybe two weeks, because once you get on a job, you tend to stay on the job. So I'm sitting at lunch one day with a new girl, and her name's Harriet, <laughs> and she's so angry, because a non-union girl, that would be me, has been working, and they didn't call her. And that was when I realized she meant to call Harriet, but she dialed my number instead. So it really is, and it always has been, just the right time at the right moment and be picking up the phone when it rings because it, there's so many of us that want the job and so many want to fight for it that you really got to be, you know, available and lucky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who gets along with people in the department they're in, they're around to continue the network because what happened to me was I was exceptionally good at some kinds of buildings so I started out in construction and then gradually as I worked up through construction I got sucked into effects but the the thing is if you consistently work around people you get along with your work is usually pretty good and it makes it fun and producers like to hire happy crews and they remember what departments were no problem and the whole thing is getting the call again from that producer, not always looking for the next producer you haven't worked for. I just finished doing a TV show called Salem, which is dubbed 90. Acabo de terminar la filmación de una película que se llama Salem, que es sobre unas brujas. When you do episodic, you're working, um, so Devious Maids is 13 episodes. So that's about four and a half months. Um, Resurrection last year was seven episodes. So that was only maybe three months. But 
I'm now working in the ABC studio, so I will do Devious Mage, which I just wrapped um, the week before coming here. I will go back to do Resurrection, and it will wrap in February. I'll have a week off, and we'll start Devious Mage again. So prior to that, um, I did uh, Drop Dead Diva, but I couldn't go back to Drop Dead Diva because I needed a break. Um, I don't take a lot of time off, but I, I, I thought I might need one. <laughs> uh, how do you prepare yourself for doing the makeup? They usually tell you how they want it, or they tell you how the movie or the TV show is going to be, and then you prepare the makeup um, from your mind, or did you... Um, you draw on a... A face yeah. chart? Yeah, that one. I don't really do face charts, um, but the way I prep a show is you, you sit with the director, and the director's going to tell you how they want the makeup to look. Um, with episodic, the producers are going to tell you how they want the actors to look. With, um, with Devious Maids, Mark Cherry is the creator, and he and his partner sat us down and told us exactly how these women would look. They would not have glamorous makeup. They, um, their hairstyles, we were not allowed to change the hair at all. It had to look exactly like the pilot. So if, if they were not in their maid look, we could change the makeup. We could you know, go a little more glamorous with darker lipstick. But, but by and large, we had to stick to exactly what we were told we could or could not do. Now, we could change it up a little bit, but we really were, were very set in what we had to do. With Resurrection, um, the very same thing. We were told these people needed to look as if they had no, no makeup on. They were middle America. They couldn't look you know, glamorous, they couldn't look like they were from LA, they had to be middle of the road. So with that, you know, you still want to do the eyelashes and you still want to do all of the good stuff, but you, you have to bring it back and you have to make it where the audience believes that this character lives in a farmhouse in the woods, that they're not, you know, walking down the street in LA. So you. <laughs> 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 um, 